नमस्ते शिमला दीदी नमस्ते एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन जी नमस्ते सुनील जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम बैक इन द मॉर्निंग सेशन वी आर डूइंग यू एच बी थ्री एंड इन यू एच बी थ्री वी आर अप टू मॉड्यूल थ्री वेर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द एक्टिविटीज ऑफ द सेल and particularly in this lecture in lecture 14 which we started yesterday we are talking a little bit about how when we awaken to our higher activities they become the guiding force for our lower activities so to begin with when we haven't awakened to these higher activities we are going largely by whatever we see outside whatever we are um, you know the what we hear out from outside what we learn from outside what other people tell us whatever is our experience outside so far those become the basis for all our activities so for instance if we don't have awakening to the higher activities and we don't have awakening because we are not paying attention inside so we are largely paying attention outside we may not even be aware of the self the existence of the self we may assume we are the body there may be many assumptions like this from outside so all our lower activities are taking inspiration from the outside so if you look at desires our desires since we have nothing from inside guiding our desires we are largely looking outside and basing our desires on the outside so whatever we see outside based on that we think okay this would be good that would be good when we select something you know in our lowest activity of expectation selecting tasting we select on the basis of what is pleasurable to me what sensation i like i try to continue with that what i dislike i try to avoid it similar is the case with relationships i don't see relationships based on what they are i see relationship as people who think like me people who have ideas and opinions like mine or people who um listen to what i say those kind of people i like to be with and i see my relationship with them and those who have differences in opinion or those who don't listen to me or those who you know seem to be having different ideas those people i don't see my relationship with so this is going by whatever i'm seeing from outside whatever is pleasurable for me whatever i think is giving me some moments of what we call happiness and this is largely because happiness inside we are not able to see first of all we are not paying attention inside so we are not doing anything for awakening to the higher activities and we don't know of the happiness that is possible inside once we start awakening to the higher activities or at least if we start referring to the natural acceptance so with that you know our focus being outside our selection tasting our thought analysis comparing our desire everything is being driven by the outside and in fact due to this lack of happiness whatever seems pleasurable to me i think that is my desire 
So for instance, I like sweet, the taste of sweet on the tongue, I like that. It gives me pleasure and I want to have it again and again because that pleasure that I derive from it, I want it more and more times. Now here you will see that inside there is no happiness. So obviously you're going to try to get the happiness from outside. And because this seems to be giving me some happiness for a short time, I think this is my desire. So I say my desire is to eat this sweet. But if you look at the base, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to be happy. That's what I'm trying. And this happiness is my need. And it is a need that is there all the time. I don't want to be unhappy even for one moment. So what's going to happen? I'm trying to be happy every moment through this physical facility, the sweet, which cannot give me happiness every moment, obviously, because the moment I put the sweet on my tongue, yes, I feel the pleasurable sensation. The moment the sweet leaves the tongue and goes inside the throat, now, where is that sensation? That sensation is gone. The pleasurable sensation, that sweet taste is gone. So now I start looking for that taste again. Because it's giving me pleasure, it's giving me happiness for that time. So I go for another sweet and another and another. And if I don't, you know, have the guidance from the higher activities. I keep doing this until, of course, the body doesn't need. And even I stop relishing the taste as much. You'll find this with all sensations. That the, at some point, there is saturation of the sensation and you don't appreciate it as much. So like we were talking yesterday, you know, you're eating a meal, you start with, you're very hungry, you may not even notice that the salt might be a little less and you might just eat because you're very hungry. But as you come towards the end of the meal or as you, as the stomach starts getting filled up, now you think more about the taste. Then you think, oh, salt should have been more. It's not tasting so good. Or you say, you know, perhaps if we had this chutney with it, or it should have been hotter. So we start somewhere looking for more taste, more taste. And at some point, you know, you feel, okay, enough. I can't eat anymore. Even with added salt, now I don't want more. Even though it is heated up for me, even then, now I can't eat more. And then if somebody forces us to eat, then you want to rebel. You want to say, no, I cannot eat more. You refuse. So this cannot be a source of continuous happiness. This is very clear. And so I am looking for this happiness outside, which can't serve my purpose of looking for this continuity of happiness. But when I am awakening to the higher activities, when these higher activities of contemplation, understanding, realization, when I slowly start awakening to these higher activities, then now my guidance is from inside. So 
this starts driving my desire. So I can refer to my natural acceptance and I can see that I want to live in accordance with this, what is naturally acceptable to me, coexistence, harmony, relationship. So now this becomes my desire. For instance, earlier I may not have been able to see the relationship with those who disagreed with me, but now I can see that I have a natural acceptance for relationship with all. So that becomes my desire. And I start moving towards that. So you will see how like this, all our desires get, you know, they come down to this fulfillment of the human goal, trying to um, go with what is naturally acceptable to me. So if you look at the thoughts, the desire we just saw, in fact, the thoughts go along with the desire. But when our thoughts are unguided, when our desires were unguided, when, the, when we had not awakened to the higher activities, then this unguided, or you can say the influence of the preconditioning, the sensation, that was what was driving our desires, our thoughts, our expectations. So whatever appealed to the senses, we went for that. And we kept going for that. So there was an obsession for sensation. Therefore, you see problems like obesity and so many such issues where the health of the body is not being looked at but largely whatever is appealing to the senses. People don't walk anymore. People sit at home because, you know, what you call couch potato. You sit in front of the TV or a lot of times these days it is just the phone. You sit with the phone on the sofa and you keep sitting and spend hours there. Not so good for the health of the body, but you are enjoying some show some something on the phone and you want to continue with that. It appeals to you, so you are driven by that. Or it could be that we are so obsessed with, you know, the form, the shape, what does my body look like? And I want it to look good, so I must go to the gym, I must work out so that it looks good. So looks is important to me. Or I am so obsessed with the health of the body that I am consuming more and more of the resources. I want to make sure to do every single test, do whole body scan, do all those things that I think are going to help me keep the body healthy. So I am expecting something to be done from outside so that my body can be healthy. Go to the doctor, get preventive medicine, do this, do that, many things. I may overdo these things. So I have an obsession for indulgence in this also. And of course, when it comes to earning wealth, earning physical facility, I have an obsession there also to accumulate more and more and more. I have no idea about how much I need, but it seems like more is better. So I keep trying to accumulate more. My whole look at things is for profit. If I don't get profit out of it, then it's no use for me and I drop it. Nothing else seems to matter. And for that profit, I may be willing to go to any length. This is when there is no guidance from above. 
but what happens when you have some guidance yeah so this is about when we are going with the conditioning and sensation but once we start referring to the natural acceptance then i can see that whatever is naturally acceptable to me that is what seems to give keep me in harmony and i can experience that happiness within i can experience this happiness when i am you know having my thoughts my expectations my desires in line with my natural acceptance and i am i want to continue with this state and here the continuity is possible this is desirable also it is possible also so we talked about you know when we are using sensation for happiness so there is a physical object you can take the sweet you can take anything else you can take music whatever it is there is some contact with the body some impact on the body some sensation in the body i read that sensation so i taste that sensation if i find the taste favorable i feel okay this is pleasurable i seem to get happiness out of it if i find it unfavorable it seems to lead to unhappiness both of these are temporary of course for some time so it's only temporary it cannot lead to my quest for permanent happiness isn't it? but once i awaken to the higher activities once i start experiencing the happiness within then it's not like the sensation doesn't have any role now it doesn't mean anything the impact of the physical object will still be there sensations will still be there i can still read these sensations but now the meaning that i give to this sensation will be totally different now i use that sensation for a different purpose not to derive happiness because happiness is already there within by having the right feeling but i use it for maintaining the health of the body so i taste something to find out if it is good for the body or not i get some idea when i taste it similarly i get some idea of whether it's right for the body or not by smelling the food by the look of the food so all this i am using my sense organs for trying to decide what kind of food to put in the body with my underlying focus being on what will be nurturing for the body not just taste and it doesn't mean that if you have to have something that is nurturing for the body it must not be tasty it can be tasty surely we can make it tasty but my focus is on the nurturing part not on the taste i won't keep having just for taste i will also be concerned about the purpose of the food what is my purpose why am i eating this food am i doing it for nurturing the body or am i doing it just for taste so if i keep eating heavy foods it may seem tasty but soon after the meal i fall asleep i am drowsy i fall asleep what is the purpose of food to energize me or to make me dull and sleepy so i realize that this is not conducive for nurturing the body 
so i make some changes so instead of the fried masala the heavily oily kind of food i go for lighter fresh foods fresh vegetables fresh fruit and i find that when i eat it i am alert and yeah, able to take care of the body better i am able to have clarity in thought i am able to focus on what work i need to do now my choice is clear so my focus becomes my purpose not just the taste taste becomes secondary and there may be things also that i will consume which are nurturing for the body which may not be tasty to me but that seems to become secondary now and you will see that this happens in a very natural progression not that you have to force it not that you have to keep telling yourself oh no i have to eat this bitter thing now but it just becomes a natural selection for you based on the guidance from the higher activities so your focus is on keeping the body in good health by nurturing the body protecting the body also you know you use this uh, lower activities for communicating you use the body as an instrument so whatever you are whatever is in your thoughts you know, first it is in your thoughts then you want to express it to the other so you use the body for expressing these thoughts so you use the body not for pleasure not for deriving sensory pleasure but you use it as an instrument for communication you can also use it for to work with nature for getting more physical facility and of course as an instrument for continuity of human tradition so we were talking about all this and yesterday we also gave an assignment based on this so um if i go through that assignment we said that we need to reflect on the role of leading sensations through the body reflect on whether you are utilizing the sensations where is your focus are you trying to derive happiness through sensation from the body or you are ensuring the right feeling within and being happy you are utilizing the sensation for the health of the body and fulfillment of the purpose of the self so this is this was the assignment that we had asked you to um, do so if you anybody has any sharing regarding this or anybody has any questions about this we can discuss them now namaskar madam namaskar to all so when i was having a breakfast yesterday after having uh, uh, some breakfast then i stopped it because i read that uh, sensation uh, based on my right understanding suppose if i uh, take some more food then uh, the my stomach may be filled but uh, my health may be spoiled based on my uh, understanding as well as my experience so that understanding is based on experience so i stopped taking food at at certain moment then i felt uh, uh, lighter and uh, also it gave, uh, i was able to digest uh, uh, comfortably and i felt very happy so i read uh, the senses based on my right understanding this is my observation yeah one thing i would like to point out to uh, you mentioned that 
you know the understanding based on experience yeah so, that that is one of the reasons yeah so if you base whatever you call understanding on experience mm -hmm. then there could be a problem yeah yeah Since, for instance when you are young you are eating that same food yeah i can digest yeah you can digest now things have changed yeah yeah now you are older but your experience was that you can have parathas and you know all heavy foods and everything and you are fine with it yeah madam now your experience you know maybe something different but even before that if you if you decide based on that past experience now there will be a problem yeah yeah so understanding we have to base it on the inside mm. we have to base it on trying to get the holistic view mm. right so we use this term very casually you know right yeah, understanding. yeah. yeah madam right understanding when we are talking about understanding we are talking about something very specific Mm -hmm. Understanding is understanding of the harmony at every level, in every unit, at every level. So, mm -hmm. in my in myself, with the body, in the family, in the society, with nature, existence, all of it. Mm -hmm. And the process of that is, or how I will come to know about all this is through awakening to the higher activities. Yes, madam. So when I awaken to all these higher activities, and I am able to see the harmony in all of these, and I am able to live according to it, that is completeness of right understanding. Mm. But we are in the process; we haven't gotten there. But still, a glimpse of that, even though we haven't reached that understanding, a glimpse of that is visible to us in the form of natural acceptance. So. Mm. This natural acceptance becomes our guiding force. So you can say on the basis of your natural acceptance. Mm -hmm. Then now you can see that it is not just experience; it is coming from within. Yeah, yeah, madam. It can happen from outside. Yeah. There, there could be, you know, some. It's not definite because it will keep changing. The outside, the form, the property of many things is changing. Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. But natural acceptance is one part of you, where you can have a reference of that which is unchanging. That can be our guide, and if we go by that, then we are going in the right direction. Yes, ma'am. Uh, whenever, uh, even though I am hungry, even though some sweets are provided to me, at some moment. i don't want to take it madam why because i think it disturbs my uh, state of uh, tranquility i feel like that madam i am uh, my tranquility or happiness is no way dependent on any other it itself is uh, happy why should i disturb with these uh, tastes and all uh, that feeling also i had madam yeah sometimes we hear something get some information and we think mm -hmm. okay i have to be like this only so anything just little bit outside of that you know we react and no no this is no good i don't want it so sensation has a role mm -hmm. yeah I use that sensation i can still enjoy taste no harm in that right uh, at that time i did not feel that also madam that may so you know the body will go along with whatever you say body yeah, doesn't yeah. have much to do with that yeah But yeah important thing for me to see is i need not react so yeah, sensation yeah. is not a bad thing having something tasty is not a bad thing but mm -hmm. my main focus will be not just taste but taste with what is nurturing for the body that becomes my focus mm. isn't it so the yes. health of the body the purpose of the food all that comes to mind and with that i make some decision yeah that is based on right understanding or on a natural acceptance yeah yeah madam yes madam 
till we have completeness of right understanding we are working with the natural acceptance isn't it okay okay madam yeah 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 madam thank you thank you yes namaste didi yes. uh, yeah i just want to share didi that uh, on this first question that reflect on the role of reading sensations through the body Hmm. Yeah, I I observed that most of the times uh, we are, you know, whatever we are doing, it is through that reading of sensations only. Mm -hmm. Most of the times, not always, but yes, majority of the times I am reading sensation, seeing something or hearing something. And in my case, in most of the interactions, <clears throat> the focus is to derive happiness from the sensation. it is only after i take a moment and i observe that i what i am doing that i am able to ensure what i should do, be responding how i should be responding to this or not but yes i am going through it but it is taking some time because of uh, in one of the interactions day before yesterday also i observed that based on my experience of whatever i have You know that preconditioning about that person. Mm -hmm. The moment the person says something, my feeling is directed by that experience only. Very nice. So it's Very only nice. when I realize that okay, yeah, I realized that okay, why I am thinking about the past experience mm -hmm. when the person is talking right now. Mm -hmm. So the decision should be on the basis of what he or she is talking right now. not on how he or she behaved in the past yeah very thank nice you. exploration thank you didi this is what we need to do we become aware then we can see you know where we need to work right yeah, yeah. based on my observation whatever i have thoughts about the person so i become sub judgmental sometimes so is it possible to do it just by observing myself why not yeah as you keep observing you don't just observe see what happens yes. is you observe and then you can see that you don't want that yes and there is a change of feeling also that also i am able to see yes. yeah so sometimes this can be driven by you know your preconditionings your sanskars from before and some of those sanskars can be very deep rooted so there yeah. you will notice that even though you have the information even though you made that decision even though now you could have the right feeling next time the same thing happens and then you say are i learned all this also and i did it also now again it's happening that's yes, because yes. of the deep rooted sanskar that is driving the feeling but as you keep referring to the natural acceptance as you keep becoming aware you will notice that even those strong deep rooted sanskar start weakening and eventually they will drop off so earlier you may not have noticed now you noticed and you could change your feeling next time perhaps you will notice earlier the time after that perhaps you know the sensation only or that that feeling itself will not come up because you are aware yes yes so slowly yes. it will happen but it will take time of course yes of course didi okay. thank you thank you didi nice so now you look at the basis for analyzing comparing once you are awakened to the higher activities so if you are you know awakened to relationship you are aware that you want to be having justice in all your human human relations so you are looking for mutual fulfillment you are not just looking for your happiness 
you are looking at the outcome being mutual happiness. So all your efforts become driven towards that. When you are awakening to the activity of understanding, you are able to appreciate the harmony that is there in every unit. So in your relationship with every unit in nature, your focus becomes to ensure that harmony. So if it is already in harmony, you don't want to disrupt the harmony. You make every effort to have the unit stay in harmony. And when you awaken to the higher activity of realization, there is an authentication of the basis of all of this relationship of the harmony. That is the submergence of all the units in space. So that becomes your focus. To be you know, living in coexistence with every other unit. Now when this guides, remember we were talking of what appeals to the senses, what is conducive to health, what is profitable. Now when these higher activities are guiding the sensations, then it's not just about what appeals to the senses. The larger picture, the focus is on, is it nurturing for the body? Is it protecting the body? Is it facilitating my purpose of having the right understanding within me? Yeah. So am I utilizing the body properly? Am I using the senses properly? That becomes my focus. Earlier, I may have been thinking about, you know, like we said, indulgence in resources for the health of the body or the look of the body. Now the focus becomes on how I can ensure the health in the body. So I start making efforts. I start watching my intake. I start um, taking care of my daily routine. I start exercising. I start doing other activities to keep the body healthy. Now my focus is not that somebody should do something to make my body better, but my focus shifts to what I can do, what is my role. And I start working towards a healthier body. Similarly, earlier, my focus may have been on trying to get more and more and more. Now, I see you know, how much I need and I work for it. I don't try to grab from others. I can see that, you know, I can see my relatedness with everybody. So I don't, you know, grab from others. At the same time, whatever I have, I utilize it properly. I don't waste it. So like these days we have a use and throw culture. Use it, you can afford it, so throw it and get a new one. But many things you'll find with the small, you know, some effort, it can be made to work properly and you can use that. So like that, we have many things in our house. We can try to see, are we utilizing these things properly? Or are we just, you know, having accumulation of stuff that we don't want in the house because it has stopped working. Neither are we giving it away nor are we using it properly. But we are getting more things. So now you start utilizing things properly. You start utilizing them, no. using them with that clear guidance from the higher activities about firstly how much is required and then whatever you have, how to take care of it properly. 
So you have a box that's getting rusted, no, a trunk that's getting rusted, and you think, okay, it's old, chuck it. Leave it, get a new one. Well, you could have just painted it and it won't rust. You could take care of it and you can utilize it. So like that, you will find many things in the house which you can utilize rightly. So as you, you know, start exploring these aspects, you find there is a lot of room for improvement within us. So we can do all of these things. When it comes to thought, like analyzing, comparing, and so on, there also you will see a lot of difference. Earlier, like we said, all of these senses for health, for profit, all of that was largely focused on the outside. Now, for everything, that comparison becomes this guidance from above. Is it in line with that? If it is in line with that, then my thoughts go towards that and I'm driven by those thoughts rather than just the thoughts on the basis of the outside. But we can see how it's happening. So the role of sensation or we start rightly utilizing the sensation to keep the body in good health, whatever is nurturing, whatever is in line with protection of the body, that sensation I go by. And also, I use the sensation to exchange right understanding and right feeling. So you are using that sensation for helping you to have this human goal. No? So supposing you are teaching something. Now, with the eyes, you can see somebody looks like they don't seem to be understanding or they are now, when you look at students here, yeah, they're all teachers, we can see that if some student doesn't follow, we can make out just by looking at the face that this person doesn't have a clue of what we're talking about. So now that sensation, that looking at that person through the eyes, that can be used for realizing that, oh, this person didn't follow then helping that other that person to understand and so on there can be many many uses in that form and this also we said so we rightly utilize the body also now we look at the body like a tool of the self like an instrument of the self so rather than just trying to beautify the body and making the body look nice and all of that. The purpose of the body becomes more very starkly clear. And with that clarity, we start working, you know, using the body for its purpose. And when it comes to you know, physical facility, acquiring more and more, the profit part and all of that. Again, we use it for nurturing and protecting of the body. And whatever, you know, more we have, we use for exchanging right understanding and right feeling through education sanskar. And in other ways, you know, similar ways we can use that rather than, so that would be right utilization of even the wealth that you have. Hmm? Rather than just accumulate and see the number increase in the bank, you use it for the right purpose. Here also, right at the top, you can see it's talking about the activity of realization. 
when there is authentication of the coexistence, you are able to see the submergence in space. Below that, you're talking of the activity of understanding. When you awaken to that, you can see that there is harmony. You can see that there is harmony in every unit, including yourself. You try to go in line with the harmony within yourself, with every unit. And so you're looking at mutual enrichment, mutual prosperity. And with the activity of contemplation, you are able to see the relationship. And you are able to work for mutual fulfillment in the relationship, mutual happiness. That becomes your guiding force. With that, now when it is guiding, now you can see the coding is the same. See the purple block on top and the yellow block below, B2, B1 on top and B2 below. So then now when B1 is guiding this B2, you will look for, you know, when you are identifying physical facility, you will see what is nurturing for the body, what is leading to protection of the body. And you will use it for behavior and work, for sharing knowledge, feeling, and so on. When it comes to you know, the um, activity of understanding, with that, you have clarity about harmony in every unit. So you also look at harmony in the body. So when there is disharmony, you have clarity about your own sense of responsibility, that self-regulation, that I need to do something because the body is, an, is my instrument, my tool, so I need to keep it healthy. So you do what, what is required. So you, you know, make a program for self-regulating so that it can be used for a long time properly to ensure right understanding and right feeling in yourself as well as with others to participate in the larger order. So now the well-being of all is the focus. But for that, you know, my roles, responsibilities, my relationship with the body, how to keep it healthy, all of that, you know, I'm able to have clarity on and with that higher goal in mind. And when it comes to prosperity, having clarity about prosperity, being able to identify your physical facility, how much you actually need and how much you have based on that, how much you need to produce more and whatever you already have, whether you're rightly utilizing it or not. All of this becomes my focus. So this is ensured. All this guidance we get from the higher activities. Uh, madam, what does uh, authentication of coexistence uh, mean? Yeah. Authentication just means now that I have seen it. Okay. No. Direct now observation. Okay. Directly able to see it. Okay. That okay. coexistence. Then with that, I am able to see this is the, the basis. This is the basis for the relationship. This is the basis for the harmony. This is the basis for how things are working on their own. Mm -hmm. the and so it becomes clear to me. And with that, I have that determination to bring all my lower activities in line with this. So all of that will happen once we are directly able to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, madam. Thank you. So now, when it comes to 
analysis, comparing and all. My focus is on coexistence, on harmony, on relationship, justice in relationships. That becomes my guiding force for the senses, for health and for profit and all of those things. Now, if you look at the higher activities, guiding expectation. Guiding are selecting tasting. So here you can see when the senses were unguided, then we were looking at sensation as a source of happiness, right? We talked about this taste, smell, touch, sound, whatever. All the sense organs, we largely use it for pleasurable sensation. Whatever gives me happiness, I'm bound to look for happiness outside because inside I don't see anything. And this need for happiness is there. So I keep looking at the senses for happiness. So my selection and tasting is largely on the basis of that. And of course, like we said, this cannot have continuity. This cannot have that, you know, I want that happiness all the time. I cannot get it from outside, from physical facility. Because we noticed, we could see that this is, it can only give me temporary pleasure. Then it is gone. Then I have to keep going for more and more. And that is why we indulge in the senses. So I have clarity about that when I awaken to the higher activity. But as long as it is unguided, this is my focus. There is a mention here, please clarify between realization and authentication with example. So for instance, you know, realization would be when you can actually directly see the submergence of all the units in space, right? If you awaken to the activity of contemplation, you are able to see relationship. If you awaken to the activity of understanding, you are able to see the harmony. When you awaken to the activity of realization, you are actually able to see space, the subtlest unit, and you are able to see that all these units are submerged in space. And now it becomes so clear, it becomes stark clear that the basis for the relationship, for the understanding is this submergence. And I am also just one unit submerged in space like the other units. So just like how the other units are playing their part, I also need to play my part. So this, you know, actually seeing that is the realization. Authentication is now you are able to see that this is the basis. And on this basis, what is my role? That becomes clear. Now I want to put all my lower activities in line with this. That is the authentication part. And so then eventually, I bring all my lower activities in line with this and it will reflect in my behavior also. I hope that was clear. Again, we'll reflect on all these things we've talked about. Thank you. Ji. Thank you, Shamla Didi, for this enriching session. Thank you, dear co-explorers, and the for your participation in the English part of the morning session.